Hogwarts Castle, a 5 inch gauge locomotive, part 11, making a new front bogey mounting. The front bogey mounts to the chassis via this gunmetal block, which has springs attached to it to control the amount of side movement of the bogey. The original steel part of this mounting is long past its sell by date. In this clip, I'm taking some measurements of the old steel part so I can make a new one. I'm not going to make this replacement part in the same way though. My new part is going to be held to the frame stretcher using an M10 bolt, not exactly this one, but one very similar. I didn't have an M10 drill, and I wondered if there was an imperial equivalent to an M10 drill. And the nearest I could find is one imperial size larger than 3 8 but that's not good enough, I'm just going to buy an M10 drill and have done with it. This is a very complex part for what it does. It's all made from one piece of mild steel, including the thread. When I brush the grime away with a paintbrush I can clearly see that this is not a separate thread. Instead, it's all machined in one lump. Frequently, in model engineering, I find that it's engineering for engineering's sake. I'm going to make this differently. Here, I'm trying to find out what the diameter is of the steel part that goes through the gunmetal block. All I'm really going to do is make a brand new part without the bolt going through the middle. And to start with, I'm going to re-thread the hole in the frame stretcher using this tap. This is a 10mm by 1.5mm pitch tap, and it matches the bolt that I have perfectly. So, off we go. Using the tap fitted into a tap wrench, I carefully re-thread the hole all the way through the frame stretcher, and then I fit an M10 bolt in place. When I do jobs like this, I frequently find whenever I want to turn a metal part, I never have the correct diameter piece of steel. So I usually end up turning a massive piece of steel and wasting a lot of time and making a lot of swarf. But this time I went to Blackgates Engineering and bought a piece of steel the right size. And using my metal cutting bandsaw, I cut a piece off to fit in my three jaw chuck in the Boxford lathe. And here, at high speed, I'm turning it. I'm not really doing it at this speed, the video's speeded up. And as always, I'm facing across the front, first with a coarse cut and then with a finer cut. Then it's time to reduce quite a bit of this steel to swarf because I need to reduce the diameter of this part of it. The head bearings on my Boxwood lathe are in quite good order and the tool is fairly sharp and this is called EN1A steel, which apparently is a leaded mild steel, so it cuts very freely. Other steels like EN8 are considerably harder. For this job though, I just need something that's free cutting and gives a good finish and look how the chips come off. These are really nice. By the time I'd rough cut my way down this piece of steel, and as you can see I've removed quite a lot of it, I thought it would be a good idea to do the final cut in reverse, because the back side of the tool, pardon the expression, is sharper than the front side of the tool. Now I need to make a hole down through the middle of this, so first of all I use a centre drill, followed by a 10mm diameter twist drill. In case you're wondering, the lubrication for this job is neat steam oil, because it's very viscous and sticky, and sticks very well to the steel, and also it will stand the heat, because after all it is superheated steam oil. Probably not good engineering practice, I'm finishing off the part to get a really good finish with a piece of wetted dry sandpaper. And I would like to say that the gunmetal block fitted perfectly, but it doesn't. That's because it's bell mouthed. When this part was originally made, it's bigger at one side than it is at the other. By using some very fine grinding paste though, and also by using a very large spanner to hold the gunmetal block, I lapped it to fit perfectly onto the steel shaft. Why didn't I video this? Well, I forgot to press record. But really, I'm glad I didn't, because I do not like to encourage my viewers to do anything in a lathe that could be dangerous. And please be aware that on every one of my belt-driven machine tools, I keep the belts fairly slack, so if anything bad happens, the belts will slip. And that must be a good idea because over the years I still managed to have about three and a half of my original fingers left. You've just been watching me parting off the component from the original piece of steel. So now I've turned it round in the chuck, I'm facing the other side of it, followed by machining the outer diameter to the right size. It's going to be a little bit bigger than the original because it can be, it doesn't need to be an exact size. I'm taking the sharp edge off with a V-tool and that's the part more or less finished. And the 10mm bolt fits fine down the centre, but it looks horrible. I don't like the writing on it for one thing. And I think that the bolt head is a bit too deep. This is a stainless steel bolt, but that's okay, it's cutting very well indeed. 
And as you can see, I'm turning down the head of the bulk to get rid of the writing and make it look a lot more model engineering like. Finally, using the V tool, I put a nice chamfer on the outside edge. And here's the block fully bolted up to the frame stretcher. The bolt is very tight. You will notice I've put a washer in place under the bolt head. It doesn't really need a washer, but I think it looks okay. And the original part goes into my box of old assorted metal parts. And that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.